this is Chris. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Today is part four, the final episode in the Making a Grocery Bag into an Ephemera Folder series. You can use this technique for any kind of a folder or folio or even a junk journal. And uh, if you stay to the end, I'll do a flip through of the final book and another smaller one that I made out of a, a fast food sack. Here is the definition of ephemera that I pulled out from one of my mother's old dictionaries. And I enlarged it so it could be read. And here it is, ephemera, printed matter such as theater programs, posters, guidebooks, meant to be of use for only a short time but preserved by collectors. So that's going to go on there. And then this is a digi kit in my shop that I made. And it's all labels. It's called Family Ephemera Kit Number One Dates, Numbers, and Labels. And all these images are scanned from letters, postcards, envelopes in my collection of Family Ephemera. I'm also going to use some items from this little box. This was my grandfather's shaving box that he made. He was in the Army and the Marines and he was also a patrolman in Los Angeles and chief of detectives. I have here some tea dyed cheesecloth. Cut off a hunk of that. Some tea dyed muslin. I don't think lace is appropriate for this project. Or feathers. Here's some elastic, but I don't think it's enough to, to make a closure with. start with I'll start with this and it's already torn but I'm just going to tear close to the tear on sticker paper but unfortunately I only had half sheets so it's split right in the middle. 
I have to choose something that's not split. Or I could just piece it together. through my um, my stash of different kinds of ephemera. These are some labels that I got a long time ago. They're like luggage labels. Recreation, reproduction of luggage labels. Well, this is Buddy, in case you haven't noticed, and he likes to sit under the warm lamps and just generally get in my way. So, oh, I think I hurt his feelings. I'd like to try some stamping on this. It's very rough so it, it won't come out even, but it might look pretty cool. So let's look for some stamps. Okay, let's see what we can do. I don't know if this says ribbon, but it is stamps. So I have stamps by color. I thought kind of like maybe it would look a little bit like an inspection stamp or something. Glue it on there. Like this folio had been around the world. Collecting ephemera. So.
Okay. Now, we still have this page. So what will we do here? I have an idea. Put my ephemera back in here before it gets spoiled. And I have this ledger paper, so I'm going to put a bit of this ledger paper on here. And then I'm going to use it to write down places where I've purchased items so I can go back and look and see if they have more. For instance, Diane H. at Pretty Pink Cottage, she goes to flea markets every week and she lives back in Pennsylvania where they have good stuff. There's not a whole lot of good stuff out west. the idea of putting it under here and under here so that you can't really see it and then you just pop it off so let's go for it I'm gonna
cut this here. But I don't want white. So what do you do about that? This is what I do. I got these markers from a catalog. They're for repairing, covering up marks in furniture and frames and things like that. But they're alcohol markers, so this is a piece of satin ribbon that I made a sample out of. So I can pick which color I like. I kind of like this one, which I think is this one. I've seen these also um, at the Dollar Tree. You don't get six, but you get three of them, I think. I don't see any manufacturer's name on there. Made in China. Now we have a grungy elastic. I'm sure you could use alcohol inks on this, but I think that it would absorb it and it'd be a lot darker. So you'd have to test that. So I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. It's a little bit wet and then we'll go from there. Try these eyelets that have a, a ring on their back. I think they're more like grommets, small grommets. So they have, they have an eyelet and then they have a ring. So I thought I would test it on here. See what happens. Okay, so let's try, see if I can even punch through elastic neatly. Well, not very neatly. And if this will go through, which it does, and then maybe some layers of paper. So we've got three layers of paper. Whoops. So I will try this. Big. Yeah, it tears the paper. Too big. So, darn, I would really like to have something that had this ring on it to help. See, I would like to have that. 
doesn't have a big enough hole punch. I wonder if this hole punch would work. There, that hole punch works. Okay. And then uh, a piece of elastic. I'll just use this one. I don't know if this is going to punch. Ah. Okay. Which way it goes? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that worked. Okay, well, we're going to try it on the book, and if it messes up, we'll just have to patch it with something. So I was all finished with this. I thought I was, but I think I need something bright and pretty right here. And so I got out one of my Edith Holden books. Edith Holden was a big influence for me. Many years ago, I found a copy of her book in England when I was visiting relatives. This particular one is 1977. I wasn't there that long ago. But at the time I was learning watercolor and I hadn't found my style and I always loved nature and flowers and plants. I grew up with that sort of thing. And when I found her book I knew what my style was. And I've been painting watercolors ever since. Botanical type watercolors ever since. And so this was a second hand book that I bought online. 
And oh, I kind of like that heather. It reminds me of when I was in Scotland. So I would never cut up my original Edith Holden book that I bought in England. But um, I can cut up copies. That's pretty. That's nice and nice and bright. And long and narrow. I like to, uh, instead of tearing it, I like to cut the strings. Thanks for staying to the end. I'm finally finished. I have made uh, two folios from paper sacks and now I'll do a flip through. So the first one is the main one that I made with the grocery sack. It has the elastic closure. I made it a little bit loose so that I can expand. So we know this is going to expand. So I open it up, and on this page I have a place where I can take notes about um, where I find things. Most of the items in here are uh, antique or vintage. Quite a few of them are antique. And some I found at my local antique store, and then others I found on Etsy shops. And I will have in the description below um, some Etsy shops that I've been to and also some of the tools that I use to make this. So if you would like to try, you can find them. So here are some things I found locally. Some old checks. Some papers. And this holds them in. Some more checks here. These are some seed labels that I got from Pretty Pink Cottage. Here are some uh, vintage playing cards. They fit really nicely in these little pockets. And the pockets, as I showed earlier, are made with this um, die. And I'll have a link to that below if you'd like to try that die. It's really cute. You can use it for a lot of things. You can uh, make all different kinds of pockets with it. So I have three more pockets I can use. 
And look at these cute little Scotty dogs. I love Scotty dogs. And these are famous authors and cats and terriers. And then a game card that's in uh, German from the Snippet Shop. And here I have some vintage postcards. These are from Pretty Pink Cottage and the Snippet Shop in Switzerland. And these uh, very vintage World War II airplane identification cards, which I think are cool, would be great in a gents journal. And these um, file shaped with tabbed papers here. I can't find I can't find a source for the for that die. And then on this side, a place for uh, more tall items. And these uh, milk tickets that I got um, from Canada. I have to look up that shop I've forgotten. Some more vintage postcards and antique. A lot of those postcards are antique. And then some various uh, vintage and antique papers. And uh, here are some labels that I got, got locally. And so this has two pockets. So that's the big one. Then I took a uh, paper sack from KFC after I bought my lunch and I made this this one, smaller one. The papers I used for this one is uh, Country Road from Paper Studio and I'll see if I can find a link for that and a link for the papers that I used in this other one, which I showed earlier. So this one has a similar similar layout. I just put pockets in it. So right here I have I purchased this uh, Tim Holtz salvage tags. There's 25 tags and it comes with um, some string. And I put those in here and I fit two pockets here and here and here. And then I have more um, playing cards in here. And this is a little side pocket here. These are all made from, this was from the flap of the bag. So uh, these pockets are glued in here. But these, these pockets are part of the sack construction. And then more playing cards. These with the famous paintings on them. I thought this would be these would be cute in a steampunk journal. Not very steampunky, but the craft are. And then I used the um, flap of the sack to make this. And I put an elastic on it. Thanks for watching this uh, extra long involved tutorial. But I think it's fun and I hope you come away with some ideas and uh, I can just imagine all the different things people can make with this these paper bags. So you might as well use them up. I believe I'll be making some more. Maybe one in between this size if I can find the right bag. I was thinking of other ways to use these. This method of using a paper bag. And I thought you could make Christmas gifts if you have friends who like to send out cards and letters. You could take these out. You could make them a stationary kit. You put envelopes in one pocket on this side. You could make some pretty cards and stick them on there. You could make some writing paper. 
Well, it doesn't fit on that one, but you could make it to fit, and then you could make a little folio that they can use to write to their uh, friends and relatives. That's one idea. Another gift idea, you could put recipes. You could make your pockets, different pockets for different categories of recipes. You put family recipes in them. And you could put blank recipe cards in there. So whoever you give it to can put their favorite recipes in there also. If you have a friend who's into gardening, first of all, they would love a paper that has a flower theme on it. But you could give them some seeds. They couldn't be too bulky. These seeds are pretty fine. Give them some seeds and then you could make a booklet where they can jot down what they've planted and where and be a little garden journal. Of course it could be bigger than that. That would make a nice holiday gift. You can use it to store other craft making materials to have handy on your desk. You might have a lot of these but you only need a few on your desk at a time. You could put those in there. You could put uh, some other sacks. Sacks in sacks. Uh, little envelopes. I have them all ready for when you're working on a project. I don't remember where I got these little index cards. Those are awfully cute. Those can go in there. That's one way to use it. You could use it as a die catalog. So here are some dies I recently purchased. I haven't used them yet, so they're still in the bag. This is my die that has the file folder, but I don't have the name of it anymore. And I could put some of the die cutouts if I had a little bit bigger bag, maybe. And I could put the die in there with the cutouts. Here's some smaller dies. Kind of dies that can get lost. So I could put some dies in here, like this. And some of the cutouts that I've already punched to have left over from another project and put in there. So that's another way you could use a folio like this. Another way is to uh, store sticker sheets. So if you have some sticker sheets, they can go in there. So you could use this for all kinds of organization. So please subscribe and like and share this with your crafty friends and come back again next week. Bye bye!